टाइमिंग इवेंट विदाउट टीयर्स इज नेम ऑफ माय न्यू नाइन क्लास कोर्स दैट इज स्टार्टिंग दिस कमिंग फ्राइडे अक्टूबर टू थाउजेंड दिस इज अ वेरी अमेजिंग कोर्स ऑन टाइमिंग इवेंट्स वेर आई एम गोइंग टू टेक मोर देन फिफ्टीन टेक्निक्स ऑफ टाइमिंग इवेंट्स that i am going to explain how you time events using them using more than 9 horoscopes and more than 45 events in the course this course is a must for anyone who is looking to time events in horoscope but in this video i am trying to discuss about the name why i'm calling it timing events without tears because <laughs> when it comes to timing the events see we have a lot of options with us to time an event primarily is dasha that one can time events with dasha regarding dasha my approach is a bit different but why i have a different approach why i am not following what everyone else is doing for me this happens because the technique that i use works better and more precisely for example for timing events everyone will use vimshutri dasha i use a set of dashas so there are some combinations in horoscope and based on those combinations i find an appropriate dasha that appropriate dasha i apply why i do so because i believe vimshotri dasha does not always show the event directly certainly vimshotri dasha shows the event every time but not very directly so with vimshotri dasha you can try to time events but it is not very direct it is not very straight and because of this particular reason you have to apply a lot of principles now so you take any book any text on timing events using vimshotri dasha you will find some 35 45 techniques when it comes to reading own horoscope of course you can delight applying all the techniques but when it comes to judiciously deciding the event that will happen application of all the techniques is nearly impossible the condition becomes worse when it is a when it is a consultation first of all application of these many techniques is difficult cumbersome task after applying these techniques you will find that almost in every dasha event is happening many a times you will find that it is confusing so my approach in astrology is that you will you should have to use minimum principles and whichever principle you use that should show the event directly it should either be connected to house house lord or significator direct <clears throat> right because other way via via is not very feasible is what i believe but the question for today is that can you directly apply dasha antar dasha is a question is a very serious question can you directly apply dasha antar dasha should you directly apply dasha antar dasha regarding my approach of using the dashas certainly as i told you i don't use vimshutri always so based on the combinations in horoscope i will use a suitable dasha and that too i will not always start from moon but i will start from the stronger between sun moon and ascendant and in that also how to find stronger between sun moon and ascendant i have a method and basically all the things that i teach in courses that is never out so it is not told in any youtube video or anywhere as such so futile to look for that what a student is getting in a course is the only place that they are getting it there is no other place for it right but my point my question 
should you can you apply the dasha directly answer is no why first and foremost you should see the promise the event that you are looking at is it indicated in horoscope for the ease and for the interest we will take marriage or meeting girlfriend boyfriend relationship timing we will take as a standard example throughout the video so first of all say for the matter of marriage you see whether marriage is indicated in the horoscope or not there are few no marriage combinations that you should apply if there is no denial of marriage there should be marriage that you should understand okay once you have understood that there is marriage in the horoscope <clears throat> sorry once you have understood that there is marriage in horoscope then you will see when marriage is going to happen now any time after the age of 21 because see the approaches are different right there are some people who will tell you in who will tell you in courses that you know at the age of 22 this result will activate you ask why they will tell you socho think over it are bhaiya if you are going to think then what the teacher is doing here the purpose of teacher is to think right i don't like teaching this way if i am teaching something i teach it end to end all the aspects of it if not all the aspects then everything that is necessary for individual application of the technique so my purpose of teaching is not to give you a glimpse of what you can do with astrology but to teach you astrology so that you can practice it that's the point <laughs> and then because see when it comes to marriage generally person that is in front of you is of some age apparently marriageable age 24 25 years of age and they are having questions related to marriage now you can apply anything to predict when the marriage is going to happen but my approach in teaching is that suppose a one year old child's father have come to you tell you make the horoscope of the child and write for this child who is only one year old you have to predict their whole life this is my approach of teaching right the earlier times you used to go to an astrologer they will give you a when the child was born the parent will go to an astrologer and they will give a long written document of 20 30 pages regarding when what is going to happen that is my teaching approach those such horoscopes i don't make but this is my approach that i take in teaching so first and the foremost thing you will see is first there is promise of marriage or not regarding promise the lack of promise there are multiple few principles are there which deny marriage i have discussed in many of my videos earlier but one standard formula because though i am teaching in this video my purpose is I, my example is focused at marriage but the application can be on any house so the basic funda is when house lord and a significator is weak and house is also weak house will become weak by affliction then the event is not indicated so you say seventh lord is very weak venus is also weak seventh house is also having only malefic influences then it can deny marriage altogether if this is not the case which means the seventh lord is powerful venus is powerful then marriage will happen now the point is when it will happen right from the age of 21 you will start applying dasha and keeping in mind that one can get married up to the age of 50 from the age of 21 up to the age of 50 is almost 29 years and in this 29 years two three dashas will pass and in antar dasha almost every planet will repeat so how will you definitely decide when event is going to happen to do so first is as we understood that if the house lord and significator is weak and the house is afflicted the event may not happen on the other hand when the house lord is powerful significator is powerful house is non afflicted event is going to happen 
Now, if the house lord and Venus, house lord and significator Venus, both are very powerful, event is going to happen very quickly. If one of them is powerful, other is not, event is going to happen in middle ages. Both of them are weak, but not extremely weak. Event is going to happen very late. Extremely weak, event will never happen. Extremely weak, extremely afflicted. Now, as I as I told you, the example, first of all, when I teach something, I teach it holistically. So I am not just going to tell you, though it is a more feasible way. I believe people understand it in a better way. So to say, if seventh lord is also powerful, Venus is also powerful, one will get married between the age of 21 to 28. If only one of them is powerful, either Venus or either seventh lord is powerful, one is going to get married between the age of 29 to 35. And if both of them are weak, but not very weak and heavily afflicted, then one is going to get married after the age of 35. This is a statement. What I have done that I have modified the same funda with respect to marriage. So teaching it in this way that, okay, if seventh Lord and Venus both are powerful, one is going to get married between these and these ages, 21 to 28 is an easier method. But how I will teach you is that then the event happens early and this is with respect to marriage. Apply the same example to fifth house, fifth lord. Now keeping in mind that from the age of 25, one will start having children nowadays and can have child all up to the age of 45 for males and 43 for females I have seen in few cases. Right, 42, 43 for females I have seen. Though around the age of 40, there should be menopause whatever. So if the same principle you apply to 5th house and 5th lord, both of them are powerful. The event should happen very early. Childbirth should happen between the age of 25 to 31. If either 5th lord or Jupiter, sorry, the significator of 5th house is Jupiter. If one between 5th lord and Jupiter is powerful, childbirth should happen between the age of 31 to 35, 36. This should be considered as medium aged child, um, child in middle ages. And when fifth Lord and Jupiter both are weak, but not extremely weak and afflicted, then the childbirth should happen between the age of 36 to 43 for females, 45 for males. In the same manner, the modification can be done, should be done. For example, say 10th house. 10th Lord and 10th House Significator Mercury, both of them are powerful. One will start with their career very early in life, generally between the age of 16 to 20. One between Mars, one between Mercury and 10th Lord is powerful, other is not. One will start with their career late in life, you say between the age of 20 to 28 nowadays. 28 is also generally we consider 28 to be middle ages person completes their master's start at the job profession. If both of them are weak, Mercury is also weak, 10th Lord is also weak, that one starts with their professional life after the age of 30. This is principle number one. Event is going to happen early or event is going to happen late. You should decide based on the strength of house Lord and significator. Now in this example, say one between Venus and one between the seventh Lord is powerful, other is not. Then for timing event, you have to apply the Shah, but now you keep in mind that marriage is going to happen between the age of 29 to 35. Now calculate when the person will reach the age of 29 and when the person will reach the age of 35 and only between this time span, see the Dashas, apply it and predict. Your prediction will become correct. So this is one principle. What I am calling this, I am calling it the promise. This is one technique. More than 25 such techniques I am going to teach in the course timing event without tears. I was talking about glimpses of few techniques I will give you in the video. But apparently once again, as I told you that whatever I teach in classes, I generally don't put in videos. So it's not like I have told you I will teach you 25 techniques. I will teach you 25 techniques. No, whatever I say, I always do more, never less. So if I say it is a 20 class course, it can be 22. If I say you it is a 20 hours course, it can be 22 hours, 25 hours, 30 hours, but it will never be 19 hours. 
So 25 techniques I am teach. I am going to teach what I have planned. Certainly I will teach more than 25, but it's not like that. Ki four techniques sir, I have told in the video. So now he will teach 21 techniques only. No, he will still teach more than 25. The techniques that are given on YouTube is technically free because it is given to all. Now one technique with respect to the same regarding the strength and weakness that we have just discussed. It is a dubious task. A planet will become powerful by being in exaltation, onarashi, mulutrikon, vargottam. Four conditions. Planet will become weak by being combustion, debilitation, planetary war. Three bad conditions. Now in very few horoscopes, you will find that both seventh Lord or Venus is exalted only in few horoscopes you will find it. Generally what you will find is a mixed condition. Right? Because the planet is only powerful, this generally does not become the case. Right? What happens if the planet is exalted but combust? Debilitated but vargottam, etc. Multiple such questions can come. Now certainly in the course I cannot teach it like this when the planet is powerful, when the planet is weak, knowing the fact that it is generally a mixture. So for that, there is a funda. This is technique. Technique number 2 or 1.1 1 .1 you can say. Kendras have manifestation early in life. Kendra is 1, 4, 7, 10 hours. Panfar have manifestation in middle ages. Panfar in Panfar is houses next to Kendra, second, fifth, eighth, and eleventh house. And Apoklim have manifestation in end of life, late. Apoklim is third, sixth, ninth, twelfth house. In the case of a mixed influence, to both. 7th house and 7th lord, you should check 7th lord and where he is placed. What I told 7th lord, I do not told Venus. So you are watching my videos, you are in my course, be very careful of what I am saying. You will ask questions, sir, Venus is in 6th house, when marriage will happen, Venus I did not say. Right. Now you check 7th lord, if the 7th lord is situated in Kendra's 14710 house, it will be early marriage between the age of 21 to 28. Seventh Lord is situated in Panfar houses. <clears throat> Second, fifth, eighth, eleventh house. Marriage is going to happen in middle ages. 29 to 35. And seventh Lord is situated in Apoklim houses. 3, 6, 9, 12. Marriage is going to happen late after the age of 35. Right. When you are going to apply this principle, when the planet is not entirely strong or entirely weak, when there is a mixed influence. That is one point. Secondary point is planet also gets powerful by being in their Digbal house or near to Digbal house. Digbal, Jupiter Mercury gets Digbal in the first house and nearby houses second and twelfth. Sun Mars gets Digbal in the tenth house and nearby houses ninth, eleventh. Saturn gets Digbal in the 7th house and the nearby house 6th and 8th. Moon Venus gets Digbal in 4th house and the nearby houses 3rd and 5th. So 7th Lord near Digbal house should also be considered powerful which will again indicate early marriage. Now if the 7th Lord is in Kendra and powerful both the marriage is very early. Between the age of 21 to 24. Or in fact, 19 to 24, if I may say. Seventh Lord is situated in Kendra, but it is becoming weak in that scenario. Now it is not early marriage. It is a mixed condition. So it is marriage in middle ages. Now you say between the age of 29 to 34. In the same manner, Seventh Lord is situated in Panfar. Second, fifth, eighth and eleventh house. There it is powerful. Marriage is not happening in middle ages, but is happening early. But now the early is between 24 to 28. In the Panfara houses, <clears throat> seventh lord is weak. Marriage is going to happen late. Late in Panfara should be between the age of 33 to 36. Right. Normal in mixed situation, 
in panfara the marriage goes panfar houses the marriage comes to normal age between 29 to 35 seventh lord situated in apoklim third sixth ninth twelfth house being very powerful marriage is not happening late marriage is happening in middle ages slightly early happening between the age of 27 to 34 seventh lord in apoklim houses week there marriage is happening very late you say around the age of 50, around the age of 40 so between the age of 38 to 43 45 accordingly the result should be decided the same as we have applied the principle to the 5th house 5th lot 10th house 10th lot in the same manner the technique can be applied to any house any lot this you should say technique number 2 or this you should say technique as 1.1 now what is this what i have done here timing event without tears because you will apply vimishotri dasha directly there will be tears running out of your eyes out of the confusion that oh ho sir this dasha also seems to be indicating marriage this dasha also seems to be indicating marriage someone will tell you ignore ma dasha only check antar dasha you check antar dasha four four antar dasha and every ma dasha will become the contender for marriage then what you will predict any time between 2025 to 2035 you can get married certainly the client also knows that in 10 years he will eventually get married this not the purpose right we have to time the event at least to one year or two year and to do so if you directly apply vimshotri as i told you there will be many options there will be confusion because of which tears will roll out of your eyes and to make sure that this tear is not coming timing event without tears i am teaching which will tell you other principles other than dasha other principles which help you time events in that <clears throat> for example so many techniques are there that i am going to teach one of which is transit transit i am covering in almost first two three classes discussing the classical methods of transit and ashtavarga method of transit and all the methods of transit that i feel is suitable for the timing of event we are going to cover ashtavarga method of transit normal method of transit transit from moon transit from ascendant transit on nakshatra sarvato bhadra etc all of that i am going to teach because when it comes to timing the event there are two approaches one is when i will get married when i will have a child this is generally the approach is with respect to those things which is happening once in life twice in life and limited quantity then there is like suppose profession so one will start with profession then one will continuously engage with profession then it will be how is my time right now how is this year how is coming two years coming five years coming 10 years etc to answer that you will have to use other set of principles this is where techniques like transit come into play this is also done by dasha but dasha is not our purpose in this course right so this is also done with respect to transits now let let's not understand it this way that sir have told you actually time event from dasha but because dasha there will be multiple options so you have to use this principles to find the appropriate dasha so it is the case that you will have to learn dasha later on this is not the thing if i am teaching something i am teaching it completely so if you are going to apply dasha you apply this principle first then you apply dasha then you again apply these principles to time the event or because every course is complete in itself so you can just apply these principles and you can directly find the event also without the uses of dasha as well regarding dasha as i have told you earlier that regarding dasha i have my own set of dashas and all of these things so if someone wants to learn about dashas dasha bhed is a course mastering the prediction is a course you want to master vimshotri and how to predict using vimshotri i already told you that standard vimshotri don't work very well so vimshotri and multiple variations of vimshotri you want to master that mastering the predictions is the course you want to see the 10 dashas that i apply and use it for event timing that i told you initially that gives you clear and straight answer dasha bhed is the course that you can opt for 
mastering the predictions you can have mastering the shabed you cannot have directly to get enrolled in the shabed you will have to first study with me for some time and after that i permit for the shabed course the shabed is not openly available for everyone right there are few courses which are not openly available for everyone so before you opt for a course it is better to discuss with me drop me a mail drop me a message and we'll discuss what will be good for you what will not be good for you because there are a plethora of options out there so if you ever get confused you can get in contact with me anytime just keeping it in mind i don't prefer a phone call so it's better if you drop a message or a mail coming back to the topic that i was teaching you so with respect to transit transit is the first topic which we are going to cover in one two classes right which three classes almost first two three classes we will cover transits regarding transit i will not say that transit should not be used for timing events it can be used but i will say that transit is dependent on dasha right so transit have two purpose right as i told there is sometimes a question of how is the time right now you know muhurta the concept of muhurta whether it is right to do something right now or should i do it later on transit because if you make a muhurta chart it is also taking the planetary positions etc of the moment for which you want to find the muhurta chart of so prashna is also the same thing natal chart is also the same thing you take the moment and you lock the moment and the planetary position muh right so transit is a movable muhurta because any time you will lock as a muhurta or a prashna or a natal chart the transit position of that moment will be taken so this question of how is my time right now how is the coming 2 years 4 years 10 years what i call making a graph making a graph for anything you say you want to make a graph for marriage how is marital life for coming 10 years which year is good which year is bad which month is good which month is bad should be done with respect to transits how this is to be done in detail this we will be covering apart from that timing event with respect to transit we will also be covering for example there is a small principle that i will want to discuss about first of all let's take a few horoscopes for example this horoscope this horoscope is of a great person this horoscope of karl benz karl benz is the person Karl Benz is the Benz in Mercedes Benz, right? So he is a great, he is a great person, famous person, successful person. You say. On twentieth July eighteen seventy two, he was married to his wife, Bertha Benz. Bertha Benz, I don't know how it's pronounced. Twentieth July eighteen seventy two. we will use standard vimshottri for because i believe all of you are familiar with that as i told you initially i don't always use standard vimshottri but still 20th july 1872 you will find it was jupiter mahadasha jupiter antardasha july 20th 1872 you do you see transit calculation for this point of time what you see jupiter is exalted what you have seen in the horoscope that at this point of time from standard vimshottri 20th july 1872 it was jupiter mahadasha jupiter antardasha right let's take another example she is a famous author agatha christie <clears throat> She got married on twenty fourth December nineteen forty. 
24th December 1914, it is Rahu Dasha, Mercury Yantar Dasha. So, December 24, 1914. The condition of Rahu, Rahu is going into Aquarius. It is Rahu Mahadasha and this Rahu is going in Aquarius. Is there. Rahu should be considered good in Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Leo, Aquarius and Scorpio. This is the standard astrological funda. Rahu is in a good condition. Let's take third example of Margaret Thatcher. She got married on 13th December 1951. December 1951, San Mahadasha Rahu Antardasha. So, December 13, 1951. The condition of sun, you see the sun is situated in Scorpio. Rahu is once again into Aquarius. You see with respect to her natal chart and transit chart, you find that sun is transiting over her Venus, activating the Venus. In her natal horoscope of Libra Lagna, <coughs> sorry, Inner natal horoscope of Libra Lagna, 7th house is the Rashi of Mars. Sun is transiting in another Rashi of Mars. Right. These are the three horoscopes. Sorry, I didn't share the horoscope with you. Just a second, let's do it all over again. That's not an issue. I am saying as you see this horoscope. This is the horoscope of Karl Benz. Standard Vimshatri Dasha we are using. He got married to Bartha Benz on 20th July 1872. 20th July 1872, what is happening? It is Jupiter Mahadasha, Jupiter Antar Dasha. You see Jupiter, 7th house is the Rashi of Saturn, you keep it in mind. July 20, 1972. Sorry, 1872. You see transit. What you see, Jupiter, the Mahadasha Lord is in exalted condition. Exalted in Cancer. Another example we have taken of Agatha Christie. She is getting married on 24th December 1914. 24th December 1914 is Rahu Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha. December 24, 1914. Rahu Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha was there. Rahu, you see Rahu is situated in Aquarius and Rahu is good in Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio. So, Rahu is in a good condition. In the horoscope of Margaret Thatcher, she is getting married on 13th December 1951. <clears throat> which is Sun Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha. December 13, 1951. You see, Sun Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha is there. Sun is going into Scorpio. Her natal chart, 7th house is the Rashi of Mars, Scorpio is another Rashi of Mars and Rahu is in Cancer. Rahu is considered good in Cancer. Right? Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Scorpio and Aquarius. Sometimes Leo is also taken. But I don't take Leo. So Rahu is also in Cancer. So the principle of transit tells you that <clears throat> to time and event, when Mahadasha Lord is transiting through his good Rashi, his exaltation Rashi, own Rashi in our Gautam condition, friendly Rashi, good result related to Mahadasha will come to pass. That is one point. Mahadasha Lord should be in a good condition. Or Mahadasha Lord should be transiting the Rashi of the house Lord. For example, for marriage, if Mars is the Lord of the seventh house, then Mahadasha Lord should be transiting the any houses of Mars. In this further to time the event to the month, month, in one month sun changes the transit. 
so for the purpose of month you see the transit of sun when event will happen sun will be transiting good rashi for the dasha lord house lord for example you want to time marriage when marriage will happen when sun is transiting exaltation rashi or own rashi of either the mahadasha lord or seventh lord or a planet connected to the seventh house the same principle can be applied to moon to find the day when the event will happen so transit is used into two ways first of all to make a timeline how is the coming 5 10 15 20 years are for my marriage profession or anything which months are good which years are good which are bad and secondarily it can be used over the sha to fine tune the event with respect to which year which month which day the event will happen in the course as i told you in the first three classes we will be learning about first two three classes we will be learning about transits we will learn about the classical method of transit analysis one of which i have just told you nakshatra transit based on sarvato bhadra and many other methods right we will cover in depth ashtakavarga method of timing events pindas etc everything will also cover transit in different divisional charts i have always said that do not apply transit on divisional charts because the way it is applied generally is not the correct way so we'll go to the correct way there are many techniques <coughs> which is supposedly nowadays called nari techniques and other contemporary techniques are also there for timing events through transits that also we will learn how the transits is used over arud how the transits is used in gemini system that also we will learn to time yearly events there is something known as tajik tajik is a very phenomenal very superior technique i have discussed it <clears throat> i have a course over it by the name of tajik and i will tell you whoever have taken the course of tajik have greatly benefited from the knowledge and they pledge by tajik right you know like students have the question that sir if we use tajik timing event is a matter of minutes but then what is the vedic sages way of timing the events that is sudarshan chakra told by parashar so that also i am going to cover in detail with some new techniques related to sudarshan chakra that we have all never learned before there is also something known as progressions where you progress a planet 1 degree per year and things like that to time events five methods of these things we will learn there is a research based research based progression methods method that i have developed myself that i will be teaching there are mathematical models of timing events and i should tell you this mathematical model of timing event is here it is it is developed by a sage it should be some 5000 years old at least right from the dating of ramayan i am taking it it should be at least 5000 years old the technique is there first of all very few people know about technique and even those who know i don't know of any astrologer who have worked on this technique so far because the way the technique is given it apparently cannot be applied i have taken the technique and have done so much modifications have colored it so much with my research that you cannot find the original technique into it but i have taken two such mathematical models of timing events which i will be presenting in the course as well and this is the highlight of the course because the technique is there since 5000 years but no one have been able to work over it so far i have worked over it and this mathematical model is like you do some addition calculation subtraction in horoscope basic mathematics and you get an year when the event is supposed to happen and it works very miraculously so that we are going to learn there are techniques related to <clears throat> when results will be fructification when maturity of planets etc will happen two such techniques i have told you in the starting three such methods three such models will be taught in the course if there is some yoga in the horoscope how do you 
exactly know at which age the yoga will be activated that will be taught in the course. Regarding the fructification and activation of houses and planets, there is a research method that I have developed myself. Apart from those three methods, this fourth method will also be taught and many other techniques will also be taught in the course. More than 25 techniques, as I told you, will be taught in the course. And my approach will be that in every class, we will take one horoscope and at least five events of the horoscope. And we will see practically how these techniques help us to time the events in the horoscope. The course is starting this coming Friday, 11th of October 2024. It's a must for anyone who want to time events. Even those who know astrology, who know how to time events, this technique will make it very easy. These techniques will make timing event very easy for them. And for new students, they will learn timing events in the most easy, simple manner. That is what is in the course. And no serious learnership. Miss it. Thank you.